Thank you, Ellen and the team. <clears throat> if we haven't met, I'm Pastor Linda, one of the staff members here, and um, I have the privilege of sharing the message with you this this weekend. And um, I <clears throat> I have been working on this, and it was so interesting because the topic that I have is wisdom, and you know sometimes. I feel so inadequate to be the one delivering a particular message. And, you know, um, it was so funny because Rich mentioned in the 930 uh, service that he thought I had lots of wisdom. And I, I think I have no wisdom at all sometimes. <laughs> and, uh, and I really got to thinking about that uh, yesterday as I was coming in to do the Saturday service and I thought, what are you doing, Linda? So weeks ago, Pastor Tim um, knew that he and Jackie were going to go to Dallas to visit the grandkids. That's what they always say. We're going to visit the grandkids. And um, the, I always think that's kind of funny because he's also visiting their daughter and son-in-law. But it seems like that is not quite as important as the grandkids, right, Becca? <laughs> but um, they're down there having a good time. And um, he said, you know, would you be willing to preach that weekend that I'm gone? And <clears throat> I was thinking about it, and I, I really prayed about it. And he told me what the topic was and everything like that. Yeah, I can do that. Well, you know, it just did not register in my brain that those of you who have been around a while know that I co-chair the auction. And the auction was a week ago Friday, and I have all the cleanup from the auction the week after the auction. There's all the details to do and everything to do. And I was exhausted. I was so tired after that. I felt like I had been on a, you know, an overnight trip to Hong Kong and uh, was trying to get myself back and I went, that was not a very wise decision on my part. And then yesterday morning, I was, um, I had signed up, we have this uh, really cute little dog, some of you have met, Barkley Bear, who's an eight month old Karen Terrier with lots of energy. And I had signed up to do what they call a pack walk with Barclay on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock at Brightwater. And what that meant, we had never been on a pack walk before, but what that meant is Barclay there had to go walking with uh, 10 other dogs, which uh, he could not integrate with. He had to stay separate from these dogs because half the dogs were, um, did not want other dogs in their space and would get really, would bite them if they got in their space. So we had to keep Barkley away from other dogs. Well, if anybody knows anything about my dog, my dog does not want to be kept away from other dogs or people. He is very social, he loves dogs. And so the whole time, for one hour, Rich and I were trading off, holding our dog back from um, going out and getting into the mouth of a German Shepherd or something like that. And, and so I was so stressed after this walk, and I thought, that was not very wise. <laughs> so wisdom, I am not an expert on. I know that already. Wisdom is, I'm a student of wisdom. I am searching for it just like you are. And so I hope that I can share with you some of the quest that I'm on for that wisdom and bring you on that quest with me because it has so much value for us in our lives so that we can make choices and choose paths that are going to benefit us in the long run. And we need wisdom each and every day, all of the things that come up to us. So today we're concluding our series on encouragement that works. And um, that has been a study of the wisdom literature of the Bible. And the passage that I am going to be kind of unpacking for us today is Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. And you can find that written in your um, handout in the bulletin, and you'll be up on the screen. Or if you want to open up your Bibles, you can do that as well. But about 10 years ago, Adam Brown was preparing to go to college, and his father, H. Jackson Brown, wanted to give him some principles as he was 
kind of going out in the world, away from the family, principles that he could live by. And uh, so he wrote out everything that he had learned over his lifetime to share with his son um, as he was going away to college. And he wrote it in kind of a little booklet form and gave it to his son. Well, it started getting passed around the family and it got passed into, you know, friends and, and neighbors. And someone finally came to uh, Jackson Brown and said, you need to publish this. And so he did. And uh, the book that he published is under the title, Life's Little Instruction Book. And some of you may remember that book. It was very, very popular. It sold millions of copies. The guy became um, not only wiser, but wealthier <laughs> because of the book. And um, it, has helped a, it has helped a lot of people over the years. Well, about 3,000 years ago, King Solomon had done that. And that was King Solomon wanted to give the wisdom that he had learned throughout his lifetime to his sons. And he also wanted to give it to the children of Israel so that as they were coming up in life, they could learn some of God's great wisdom for their lives. So that we know is the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is the original life's little instruction book <laughs> of, of wisdom. So that is something that we have with us that we can then look at and say, what is God's wisdom for our lives? And so we learn from that. When Solomon became king, God came to him in, his dream, in a dream and said, Solomon, you are now going to be the king of the nation of Israel. I'm going to grant you whatever you wish. What do you wish? And um, Solomon said, I wish for wisdom. I want your wisdom, God. And so when, when he said that to God, God was very, very pleased because he, he realized that, wow, Solomon is already wise because he's seeking wisdom. And what he said to Solomon, he said, since you have asked for wisdom and not for a long life or wealth or power over your enemies, I will give you what you asked for plus I will give you what you didn't ask for. I will give you wealth, honor, and a long life. And I, I think about that, you know, and I think, would I have asked God for wisdom? Would that have been my request? You know, what would your request be if God came to you and said, I'm going to give you whatever you want. What do you want? You know, and, and I can think of a lot of things that I would ask for, you know, eradicating world hunger might be a one up there on the top of the list. You know, there's, there's some great things that we can ask for, but Solomon knew that the most important thing that he could ask of God is God's wisdom. And that's what he asked for. So Solomon realized that if he got wisdom, that everything else would follow. Because then God would give him the insight to know how to handle things, whatever came along. So wisdom is a really important thing for us. Where do we get that wisdom? Well, the Bible tells us we get it from God. We get it from his word. We get it from our interaction with God. And so it's getting deeper and going deeper with God. But there is a difference in wisdom. I did a search on um, Amazon.com, on book of wisdoms, you know, books of wisdom, to just see what's out there. And there was, in my search, there came up 610 books on wisdom. Just the word wisdom, 610. That's a lot of books on wisdom. You would think we would be very wise people. But when I looked at it, it was like wisdom of cats, wisdom of dogs, you know, all of these things. I'm thinking, I don't think, you know, I love my dog, but I don't think my dog is very wise. <laughs> and uh, all of these really silly things on wisdom. And there's a lot of wisdom that comes out of, um, so I Google searched, you know, sayings of wisdom. So here's a few wisdom sayings, some of them very true, some of them funny. 
that I found from famous people. The first one is from Albert Einstein. And he's, his word of wisdom is, the hardest thing in the world to understand is income tax. True. Then this one, and you know you are old when the candles cost more than the cake. Bob Hope. I love Mark Twain's, I, I'm, I'm claiming this one. Age is an issue of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Mark Twain also said, and this one is, this one is so true. Don't argue with an idiot. He will drag you down to his level and beat you with all his experience. Lily Tomlin says, I've always wanted to be somebody, but now I realize I should have been more specific. But my favorite is Charles Schultz, and this is so true. He says, stop worrying about the world ending tomorrow. It's already tomorrow in Australia. So there's lots of little quips of wisdom out there, but we want to know God's wisdom. Which, you know, are these really, truly God's wisdom? So the wisdom that we need to concede is his, to succeed is his wisdom. In ancient times, people sought their fortunes by finding treasure. You know, we, we have it different today. We maybe seek our fortunes by buying a lottery ticket or by, you know, having the, the right job or the right company that we work for or the right investments, those kinds of things. But, but people in ancient times didn't have those available to them, so they would dig for treasure. And so the Bible really speaks of wisdom as that treasure that we look for. And that the benefits of those treasures that we look for in God's word for wisdom far outweigh the earthly riches that we would look for in life. So as we, as we read God's word, we find that true wisdom, not just intellectual knowledge, but true wisdom, which really is a transformation of our character, who we are, our integrity, our honesty, our, our kindness. You know, those kinds of things are the wisdom that we seek for in God's word. So let's take a look at the verse, Proverbs 2, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. Let me read that for you. You can read along either on the screen or in the handout or in your Bibles. <laughs> my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. You know, again, this was written for children. This was written for the, the young people that are getting ready for life. You know, Solomon is wanting to get them prepared. So this is written for, for the young people, but we all can benefit from them because we all have that need for that wisdom. My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Turn your ears to wisdom, concentrate on understanding, cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver, seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense to, be on, to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. He guards the paths of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. Then you will understand what is right, just, and fair, and you will find the right way to go. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. There is so much in these passages. This is so rich. Um, you know, it's something that we need to go back over and over and over again and dig deep into what God is really saying to us here. But Proverbs 4, 7a kind of says it in one simple phrase. It says, getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. 
So just the fact that we become students of God's to learn his wisdom, just the fact that we dig for that wisdom brings wisdom to us. And so it's that decision to dig deeper. It's, it's Derek Kidner, who is a, a commentator on Proverbs, says, what it takes is not brains or opportunity, but decision. Deciding to go for wisdom. Do you want wisdom? Come and get it. God has that wisdom for us. He wants it to be a part of our lives, but he wants us to pursue it. And so there's things, there's actions that we have to do. So if we want God's wisdom in our lives, we have to dig for it. We have to look for it. It just is not going to come to us because we sit in our chairs and say, God, I want wisdom. If you want wisdom, it's going to take that effort, that decision on your part to pursue it. James 1, 5 through 6 says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as the wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. God, God, God needs to be our focus. If we want wisdom, we need to keep our focus in the right place. God is where we put. James says that we make, make, need to make sure that our faith is in God alone, that we're not putting faith in others. You know, so often I think about that and I think when I seek wisdom, you know, in other words, when I get myself in a tough spot, where do I go? Where do I go first? And generally where I go first is I will think about intellectually in my brain, who is the best person to talk to about this? You know, and oftentimes I will cause my, call my husband rich. And, and I'll say, Rich, I'm having this problem, blah, 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 blah. Or I'll go to Pastor Tim. Or I'll, I'll go to one of my coworkers. You know, that's my first place to go. And it, it dawned on me as I was studying this, that they are not God. You know, first I need to go to him. When I have a problem, the first place I need to go is to seek God and what he has to say. You know, so often I think we just kind of remain on the surface and we don't dive deep into his word, dive deep into prayer, dive deep into his word, dive deep into worship. All of those things that help us to gain God's wisdom, we remain on the surface and we don't get the, the beauty and the benefit of what God can give us. And so as we can dive deeper into these areas, you know, I think about how often do we pray? You know, for some of us, maybe it's doing good if we have a prayer for dinner. But God wants us to go deeper. He wants to hear our heart cry. He wants us to pray on a regular basis. He wants us to come with him, to him with our needs. You know, how often do you, do you read your Bible? For some people, they read it at Christmas. They read the, the, you know, the story of Jesus' birth, and that's the first time they crack the Bible open. You know, digging deep into his word and seeing what does his word have to say to me to give me wisdom for the day. I know when I start my day off with my Bible reading, it, it just makes the day so much smoother. Digging deep. Digging deep into worship. We seek wisdom. And that seeking becomes a lifetime search. In Proverbs 2, 3, and 4, it says, Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasure. You, you get this sense that what, what um, Solomon is saying here is you've got to really want it. Seek after it. Cry out. Ask for understanding. Search for them as if it's silver. Now, we, we oftentimes in our culture don't think of silver as the most precious metal. We think of gold as the more precious metal. But at this time that Solomon is writing this, silver is very precious to the people because it's rare. They don't have much silver. They have a lot more gold. So silver is the more precious metal. 
And whether you're talking silver or gold or any other precious metal, think about what it takes to mine silver or gold. It's not an easy task. You have to work at it, and you work at it, and sometimes when you're digging a silver mine or you're uh, mining for gold, whether it's going in the, you know, using a gold pan or, a, or like my brother, my brother ran a, a um, had a gold, what do you call it, claim on the American River in California. And he had a section of the American River that he mined for gold out of the bottom of the river. And I went and saw him one time, and, and what he hid had was a raft that floated on top of the river, was anchored there, and then he would dive down with scuba tanks on, and he would vacuum up the soft sediment on the bottom of the river. And within that sediment, about once every six months, he would find gold. But that nugget of gold that he found every six months paid for his business of mining gold and brought him profit. But it took hours and hours and hours of mining before he got that gold. And it's the same way with God's wisdom. It's just not instantaneous. It's seeking on a daily basis. I really love what Warren Worsby says in his commentary. He says, obtaining spiritual wisdom isn't a once-a-week hobby. It is a daily discipline of a lifetime. It's a decision that we make to over and over and over again seek God's wisdom in everything that we do. And it takes time for us. And that wisdom is treasure. That wisdom is so important in your life. And I think about, you know, so many of you in this room, you have a lifetime ahead of you of, of the things that you're going to be doing. And, and if you can, as a young person, seek that wisdom, that is going to be um, amazing. I remember, I remember when I was um, just graduating from high school, my mother and dad got me aside and they said, Linda, put $100 a month in a savings account, and by the time you reach 50 years old, you'll be a millionaire. I didn't listen to her, but I know now if I'd have put $100 a month, <laughs> <laughs> I would not be at all worried about retirement. <laughs> but, you know, we, we don't think about those things at the time. We're just, you know, but wisdom, that wisdom is so important for us to understand. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. When you are wise about your choices, things go better. And even when things are going good, you have wise choices about how to deal with them. So it's so important. You know, I, I often talk about my mom uh, because she was a very special person in my life. And she was, to me, a lot of times, a source of wisdom. Sometimes I didn't like her wisdom. But, you know, you know what I mean, right? Sometimes you don't like your parents' wisdom, but later on you go, wow, that was really, that was really wise. And, and I was thinking about that, and I was thinking, you know, where did mom get all that wisdom? She, she would actually have many of my friends in going through school that would come to her and ask for her wisdom in the things they were struggling with. And she always seemed to be able to see through all the junk and, and really give them great advice. And you know, you, you wonder sometimes where that comes from. But there's one thing that I was thinking about, about my mom, and, and I have one of her Bibles, but I could not find it. Um, I wanted to have it here to show you, because one of the things that my mom would do is she would every night, every morning, she would read her Bible. Without fail. Every night, every morning, she would read her Bible. And she would read it in bed. And I remember seeing her, and she always had her Bible, 
and this is how she had it. She had it folded like this, and she would read it. So every Bible that she had had some kind of tape, duct tape or whatever, on the binding because she broke the binding of every Bible because she would read, 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 read. I have no idea how many, how many times a year she would go through the Bible. But I, I think it was at least three or four times. And after she had her stroke, she always wanted me to read to her and it wasn't some novel. You know, it wasn't the latest book. She would always say, Linda, read my book to me. And it was her Bible. And I'd sit while she was in her, her bed at the nursing home, and I would read. I'd read Romans, I'd read Corinthians. I'd read whatever she wanted, because she wanted the word in her heart. And I really think that had so much to do with that wisdom that she had. She sought after it. She dug for it. And um, I know I, I'm not as dedicated as she is to that, although I do read it on my Kindle and I don't have to break my binding. But I... I think that if we could become more dedicated to God's word, to our time of prayer, our choices might be clearer. Because God tells us so specifically in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, one of my favorite verses. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all that you do, and He will show you which path to take. Let's stand and pray again. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you. God, we know that you are the author of all wisdom. And God, I just pray for myself and for the people here that you will just help us to look for that wisdom. Intensely search, Lord, to seek what you have for us. And we thank you that you are so generous and so 